Today we're talking about mental health and support groups. And support groups, uh, they create a safe and supportive environment uh, that helps people that's facing mental health challenges, uh, substance abuse, other disorders, uh, to take a kind of inventive approach to get them back on track and back with their family, friends, associates, you know, so they can cope in a world that may isolate them because they cannot come out and really openly talk about their mental health. They share the same experiences and they receive empathy. And like I said, they have similar struggles. So this topic is coming up because yesterday I invited several people over to review a, a stream. And we were a little bit thrown off on the stream because we saw Von Dill's face, but it had autism spectrum. And that was the big throw off. And Von Dill, could you tell us why it threw you off? The title of, the, of it was, Is the Passport Bros Autistic? Okay, so are you autistic? No, I'm not. I was diagnosed at NLVD. And so NLVD, nonverbal learning disability, is not even on the autism spectrum. And while there may be some similarities to nonverbal learning disability and autism spectrum, there are distinct conditions with different diagnostic criteria. NLVD is a neurological condition characterized by difficulties in visual spatial processing, motor coordination, and social interaction. Now, let me go back to visual spatial. That would be your maps and your graphs and your timing, your directions. Uh, that could be, that's under visual spatial. Perceiving and understanding objects in space and judging dis distance and shape. Uh, for as the motoric, you have two, your large muscle and your small muscles. And that deals with your coordination. The other large muscles is your walking, your running, your jumping. That's dealing with the big muscles. And the small muscles are do, dealing with the um, your fingers, your typing, your writing, trying to put puzzles together. That's, that deals with motoric. Then we go to social interaction. Well, basically, it's a difficult time interacting with people and understanding their body language because they can't read the body language and they may misinterpret that the other person. What they say, you know, it, it becomes a blank. And like I said, they need an interpreter. So can you tell me something that also was confusing to you, Boo? When I was confused about is they thought I was slow. They thought I was a 30, 15 years old in a 34 minutes body. Keep going. I just didn't get the whole word. I just didn't get it at all. You didn't get that at all? No, I didn't. Well, let me explain. Sometimes, and this is why a lot of people don't come out and talk about uh, their mental health because they're judged. And we're judged much harder on the Af the black side than we are on the white side. Uh, we made a video, right, mm -hmm. about the different people that had an extraordinary brain. Mm -hmm. And we talked about, we named several people that had dropped out and still they don't classify them like these people that were talking on the tape. As a matter of fact, uh, just just to back up what I'm saying, Mr. Beast just recently made a short. And in his short, he used the word special. Mm -hmm. But when you heard the word special, what it has a different effect. Yeah, yes, it does. Okay. Negative connotation. A negative connotation. They said that Mr. Beast 
was an impressive human being. Did you think you was an impressive human being when you saw that video? I did not. Okay. So, you didn't feel like you was an impressive human being. And even Mr. B said in his short that he had a clone. And who did they say you look like? I look like uh, Osei Duke Jackson. And by you looking like O'Shea Duke Jackson, did you feel like that was a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it depends because I'm a, it depends on who you know. Okay. But when they talked about O'Shea in comparison with you, what did you what information did you get from them comparing you to O'Shea? Well, the look that I was a doppelganger that looked like O'Shea. What's that word again? A doppelganger. A doppelganger. What's a doppelganger? The the one that looks alike but don't live in the same space. Don't live in the same. And so that's more like a clone also, right? Yes. But clones do have a tendency to, I guess, be in the same space. Yes. So you were the you were the doppelganger that came onto the platform, but they had all these negative things to say about you in comparison to O'Shea, right? O'Shea Duke Jackson. What did they say about O'Shea? They say grifter. They say drama king. Things like that. Okay. And they said about your voice. What were they trying to imply? I know it's hard for you to, for implications, but what did you, what did, how, what did you get out of that? I just, I was just looking like, huh, I look like O'Shea. But I was like, O'Shea and I have very different values. That's what I got out of it. You got out of that. You and O'Shea had, and you never took a negative stance. No. Because you couldn't read their information. We had a group over here that couldn't figure out why was autism up there when nobody in the group was autistic. Nobody. And the words that they were using, it seems to be on a white side, is very positive on a black side is very negative mm -hmm. and that's why we don't use the word disability we use people with extraordinary minds and unique abilities unique abilities and a multifaceted learning style mm -hmm. because that takes the stigma off of what a mental health disorder mm -hmm. and that's what you was getting you were being even stigmatized by your community Yes. And you saw that. I saw that in the uh, yeah, other stream. Okay. So, usually, when somebody looked like somebody in our community, they try to what? They try to kill you. They try to kill you. But that's strange. Mr. Beast can have a clone that is like his CEO, could be running his operation, doing positive things. But on our side, we get what? We get, we get axed, killed. We get killed. For just looking like somebody that, that they despise or divisive. Now, one of the young men asked me in the group, he said, I don't understand. Okay, what is this charge here for? Can we go up here and talk to these guys? Because I don't have $55. So what did you think about that when he said he didn't have $55? I didn't pay that attention. When I thought about it, it was profitable for people. You, and so that made you think right there, this live stream is not here to help us, but it's here to what? Just to tear down and destroy a little bit. And, and get money. Because they said anybody that steps up on YouTube platform is what? It's content. It's content. Fair use, I guess. Yeah, fair use. And it's, it's, it's sad to use a human life as fair use. But their concern was that they thought that you needed help or you was being misguided by uh, look in a space looking at uh, information from the passport bureaus. But you had said that you had looked at information not just from the, the, the stream that you was on before. You had, could you name some of the people? You had looked at... Uh, I looked at um, BMT, R Richie Mack, Passport Quarterback Flexing, Brazil Brazil, El Guapo, Life with David, and Razor Ray. 
Okay, so you had looked at a lot of different streams. You know, you what you hadn't decided anything. You were just good, gathering information because that's how you learn. I learned, yes. And so they thought that you was in spaces that you shouldn't be in, right? Right. And you needed to see both sides of the information. Yes, I do. You know, to compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. And one of the young men in our group said, well, they got military people in their group. Have they helped any of the military people? Because when we played the other stream back, they said, well, we see somebody got really mad. Uh, do they have help? Are they getting help? So what did you think about that? My dad was in the military. And he would get profusely mad because of what? Because when you travel, how can you travel to a different country if you don't travel your mind? He always said, if you don't travel your mind, ain't no need of going to another country. You don't know yourself and you're not going to go somewhere and discover yourself. You have to learn yourself first. Mm -hmm. So they thought that it was a danger. But what they didn't realize is that they haven't learned the teaching style. What they didn't realize is that when we on this platform, we're here as educators to bring awareness, not to tear people down. We don't, the sad thing is, one side get ups and we get tore down. And this is our own community doing this. Our own community. If they can't help the people in their, in their streams, if they can't pivot the conversation and say, we got uh, people from the military, and shout out to the guys in the military, you know, because I want to really see them get help, you know. Our platform is used, and thousands of dollars were spent at my hand to put this particular diagnosis out here for parents, for teachers, for attorneys to see that there have been a lot of people misdiagnosed. This diagnosis has not been placed on the DSM-5. It's a hard diagnosis to get because we talked about Chris Rock uh, not getting his diagnosis at what age he got he, it at? He got it at 50, 56. I got it at four years, 10 months. Right. So you had a lot of what? I had a lot of work and I'm still working on myself to this day. You've had a lot of work and you've had a lot of... I had a lot of support to yeah. this day and love and compassion. But you didn't feel like being in that particular uh, stream uh before you, you wanted to go up and you thought well number one they got autism up there so they ain't talking about me they just got my picture up there because yeah. the group that was here they they were really confused they were confused they were like i thought you said that because when they saw it they thought what they, they thought it was something else so i so as me being literal i thought it did not apply to me yeah. Yeah, you're very literal, so you didn't even think it applied to you. And even as the guys talk, you thought that that information didn't apply to you either because they weren't what? Educated. Right. They got it wrong. And one of the guys said, he said, well, Miss Garrett, are you upset because uh, they're trying to say that, you know, I guess you're a lousy mama. I said, you know what? Uh, I've always had this, this fight. Even when I went out to gather all this information throughout throughout the years, not not on one day, but for many years, okay, to, 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 to gather this information up and say, hey, we need to look at this. Our community needs to see this and figure out if their child, their adult uh, children, because uh, like I said, people grow up, if they have this, if anybody in the military has it, and I have friends, I have friends, family, associates, incarcerated, incarcerated because this particular diagnosis has been overlooked and they did not commit the crime. They didn't commit it. They didn't commit it. Or even plan it. They didn't plan it. And they sure couldn't, they, they wasn't on time for it because what? Timing is a what? Spatial it's a spatial condition. They didn't read the map and graph and chart to get to the island to kill, to, to kill anybody. Mm -mm. 
They didn't do it. And that's why we're here on this platform for knowledge, for information, not to put anybody down. Or do, or to call, we want the smoke. We don't do that. No, we're not coming for smoke. We're coming for knowledge. That's all. Coming from knowledge and compassion and support. That's what we're coming for. And so you didn't see that yesterday. No, I did not. And the group didn't see that either. Mm -mm. They didn't. They didn't see that. And like they say, they had it all wrong. They had it all wrong. They figured that, oh my God, she should have turned off the TV. Did they turn off the TV when all these young men were getting raped by priests? Did they turn their eye? All the people that have had gun violence that has gotten killed, a perfect brain, a perfect brain out there has was taken down through gun violence and who do they try to blame it on they, they try to blame it on a unique ability and tell them the percentage rate of a person that has a unique ability what what is that rate when they say uh, that commit the crime yes only five percent only five percent of what of a person that has that's a that has a diagnosis commit the crime. 95% are victims of crime. And who gives that hype? Who runs that narrative? It's the media. The media the pushes. The big time media. The big time media pushes the narrative. So, I'm going to say this. I'm going to go back to that part where when they got disturbed and they were saying, well, his mother, well, if I went out and got diagnostic assessments, paid thousands of dollars, to have this information, to be on this platform, to teach people. This came out of my pocket. And I'm still paying to this day. I'm still learning and still upgrading. I don't know anybody in that chat that may have had any diagnostic assessments, any brain scanning, other than you that I'm looking at, and the, and, and the people that was here in this house yesterday. Yeah. Now, they, they, they parents with the, the full Monty, too. And every child cannot be educated through the, through the educational system because even if they have an IEP, and New York City don't even, I don't think they have them, do they? New York does not have an IEP. I would not do well in New York. I even say all the time, thank God I live in the Midwest. They don't even have an IEP. So that blueprint is gone. Even if you all have a blueprint, the teachers didn't even understand this diagnosis. We've seen other doctors. They had no clue what this was. And we had to dig in, dig in our heels. So if as a mother, if I've done something wrong, if I went out to get help for my son, to advocate for his life, and I did, also want to tell this group this that we did a story on the rappers now the young man said you were 34 years old yes sir. yes sir. thank god and i did a story on the rappers went to uh ups to get uh copies i came up with 31 sheets you know and there were many rappers on there 34 28. Now, what was the young guy that just recently? Offset. That was offset? Mm-hmm. These people with these magnificent brains are getting killed. Now, what's really going on? Now, if there is any type of mental illness or brain scanning or something that we can do in our community, then we need to bring it on home. We're sitting on these platforms and we're acting like we're the professionals. And I have taken every life experience and I've tried to apply it to get help, to advocate. If I had walked upon that chat yesterday, it wouldn't have helped. And you know why, Bondale? Why is that? It wouldn't have helped because Back when I started getting diagnosis, what happened to me in the black community? You were you were ostracized in the black community. I was ostracized because I what? Because you did you didn't beat just beat his ass. 
That was the, the national thing. If he gets disrespectful, talk back, you beat his ass and kick him out the house. Yeah, that was the thing in the black community. You all want to hear, you want me to go down front with you? No, that's not what I did. But what did I hear yesterday? What did you hear yesterday? Whose fault is it? She bl they blame you. Absolutely. I can handle that. Because I wouldn't want to leave this earth knowing that I didn't do everything I possibly could for you to give you an extension and quality of life as a mother. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want that to happen, Bondale. I want to show you and the people that's looking at this film that this is what we need to do for our kids other than beat their ass. True. Because if you beat their ass, and, it's actually the worst behavior. It gets worse and worse. And I want to strike that comment because this is a video that possibly could get taken down because we know YouTube is strict, very strict, with their, their cursing. But in this compassionate moment that I'm feeling, my voice has escalated. I'm not the angry black woman. That's not what I'm trying to display here. I'm not trying to uh, just curse, just to be cursing. No. I'll rephrase my, my statement. We don't need to beat up on our Adults, our children, we need to support them. We need to be there for them. And that's not what you felt yesterday, is it? No, I did not. So I don't feel like that at all. You didn't feel like that at all. But you do you are in a supportive family. Yes. I'm and fortunate to be in a supportive family. Just recently a young man got up on a um got up on a, 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 on his short and said that they don't even get support from their mom. Not a hug. Not anything. And as a mother, am I quick to say that I'm what? To say that you were wrong and you always give hugs and kisses and you always say you do a good job every day. And who do I say, who do I give credit to? You give credit to me. And I always say you are a what? Extraordinary mind and a masterful educator. And you're educating me. Because when this came up, I had to learn from you. <laughs> I had to learn from you. And I'm still learning from you. And this is phenomenal what I've learned from you. What I've seen in other people. How I can compare and contrast this particular unique ability with other people that could possibly have it, but they are uh, raised up, they're praised, they're human, and that's not what our community give us. That's not what we get. And I don't mind taking the heat today, Bondell. I don't mind as a mother taking the heat. I don't mind them thinking that, oh, Bondell is in horrible places. Bondell knows how he learned. He even talked about People's clock fla fashion, uh, flashing 12. He, he knows. You got people walking around here and they don't know what they got, why they responding like they're doing. They don't know why they angry. But Bondell understands why he gets angry. Bondell understands why uh, driving a car would, might be too much. Bondell understands a lot more than what a, a lot of people do. Now, when people talk about credentials, these are all life lessons. And whatever happens in a person's life, don't always take it as somebody's coming at you. Somebody's coming for the smoke. Or oh, we're about to put that work in. Our work is education. Patient. Our work is awareness. And our work is compassion. Empathy and support. Court. And I want... People know that empathy is the biggest communication to open doors to understand other people. Yes. And if you cannot show that empathy to a person, guess what? Our, our country, if we lose our empathy, we're going to be looking like other countries that have none. And we will lose our subscribers. 
we will lose our subscribers. Yes. Now, I think that the content that was put out there on Vondale, shout out to the brother that put it out. Shout out to them too. And I appreciate it. Because we needed that information to show a group of young men the, the good, the bad, the ugly. And we went through that information and dissected it. That's what we do. And I think when they walked away, they learned something too. But they said that they wanted to be treated better. And they wanted the veterans to be treated better. They didn't want to see the veterans in those groups being triggered like they were. When Von Dell saw one of the guys, what, what was his name? Travel Squad. Travel Squad. And he was talking about, uh, don't mention, uh, don't talk about, what was it? Don't talk about things you don't know. Who did that sound like? Sound like the other stream. It sound like who? You can look into the camera. Mm -hmm. Tell me. It sounds like dad. He it, sounded just like my dad. And why? Why didn't your dad want to talk about the military? Because it was it was it was a code not to talk about the military. Okay. And that they were units, and they knew that when they stepped back on this soil that they knew that people wouldn't do the things for them that those brothers would do and risk their lives. Yes. So it was like, you don't go there. You don't go there. And Vondell saw that on that stream. Yeah. And one of the young, and the other young man said, can they help him? Now, as far as Vondell needing uh, support, I appreciate the offer, but as as a person that comes out in the YouTube street, our crews support other live streams. We always have. We support. And that's all we want you all to do is support and be there for each other instead of tearing each other down. If Mr. Beast, and this is the biggest YouTuber on, on, on uh, the platform, can use the word special, can use the word uh, being, uh, what did he say? I think it was his, his clone was a lunatic. Use the word clone, okay? If he can use those words and it could be used in a positive way, then we can use words in a positive way and maybe help remove the stigma and help remove the stigma and more people would come out and talk about their mental illness, they would come out. Mm -hmm. But what is holding us back? You say it takes a village to raise a community? What kind of village do you have? You say you didn't want Bondell exposed to, you know, uh, what was the young man video? Uh, Razor, Razor, Razor Ray. Razor Ray. Well, look at the exposure he getting in the United States with all the killing. You think he's safe here? No, I'm not safe. I'm not safe anywhere here or you know, anywhere in the world. If if you cannot, you know, if you cannot see through the eyes of another person, if you cannot hear their voice, if you cannot lean forward and listen to their heartbeat, then you have no empathy. Sin through the eyes and the ears and the heartbeat of another leaves open communication. And that's what we lack in this country. It's open communication and empathy and care. There you go. So, Vondell, I'm going to leave it with the last word. What would you like to tell this particular group? Well, let me tell you this to the particular group. I wasn't here to cause any smoke or any pain or things like that. I'm not here to, I'm not here to bring smoke. I'm here to bring compassion, love, support, and education. That's just it. And that is all. On that note, we'll close this video out. Uh, the concern has rotated itself. I appreciate the platforms talking about mental health, 
they don't have to go out and make any more videos about rescuing Vondell because Vondell has had more support, more love than a lot of people out there. And we will continue to do that for Vondell, the family, the support groups that he have around him. We will continue to teach and learn and give a positive, we will issue our positive words, not negative, but positivity. That's what we need. And once again, shout out to all, to all of the military. Because they have paid a price and fought a war that wasn't theirs. And it's time. They're overdue. It's time for them to be heard. To get help. Where people can say that we can show that compassion, empathy, and support toward them. And on that note, we're going to close out this video. We thank you for giving the opportunity to say that you will send Vondell to uh, another place. We refuse the offer because we're good. Vondell's good. We want other people to be good. And we want those people to be good in your group. So maybe it's time to change the conversation. And on that note, we're out.